Amen, praise the Lord. I won't keep you long this morning, about an hour and a half, praise God. And uh, No, I'm just kidding, praise the Lord. <laughs> I won't do that. I'm just going to speak probably about 25 minutes or so. I'm going to speak fast, so keep up with me, praise the Lord. <laughs> and I want to kind of take us on a journey with the disciples uh, that first Easter and kind of see where, you know, what they went through is kind of some of the stuff that we can we go through at times in our lives, praise the Lord. So most people that go to church have heard the Easter story about Jesus going to the cross dying for our sins and being rose from the dead. If you've been to church at all or been around any time a, a type of Christian people, you've heard the Easter story, praise God. Even people who don't go to church can kind of tell you a little bit about the Easter story or come close to telling you about it. For example, there was a school teacher who asked his students, what does Easter mean? Or what, you know, how do they see Easter? And so here's a few answers. One kid said Easter is about the Easter bunny and getting eggs. And I guess if you're in the secular world, that's kind of about what it's like or about, praise the Lord. One kid said Easter is about getting candy and dressing up. I mean, who, who doesn't like candy? I like candy and I like to dress up for probably weddings, funerals, and special occasions other than that. But other than that, I just like to dress normal. One student said Easter is about barbecuing and family get-togethers. And I like get-togethers and I love me some barbecue, some pulled pork, praise God, some burnt brisket in, some mashed potatoes and gravy. Let me tell you something, you throw a fried pickle in there, and that's, that's, that's almost close to heaven, praise God, right there. And so one of my favorite responses is right here. It says, one student said, it says, I think Easter is about Jesus coming out of the tomb. And if he sees the shadow, we have six more weeks of winter, praise the Lord. So... <laughs> That's the best. I mean, he's way off, praise God. But uh, they, that family, they definitely need prayer, need to be in church, praise the Lord. So anyway, I want to look at Easter from a little different perspective this morning. And, and so if I had a thought, it'd be living on the wrong side of Easter, praise God. See, many Christians, church, they're living on the Calvary side of Easter, the cross side, the crucifixion, the pain and suffering side. The side church with uncertainty, the side with doubt, and the side of lost hope. See, a lot of people know Jesus Christ died for their sins, and, and they get saved, but they're living their life without the power, without the joy, without the transformation, without the hope of the resurrection, praise God, that Easter brings, that that resurrection life brings. And see, a lot of times we hear, uh, our believers, we hear that resurrection story, praise God, especially if you've come to church at least once or twice a year, you've heard that story. But we live on the wrong side of the resurrection. We live on the other side, the empty side of the cross. And what I mean by that, church, is this, that maybe you've had a salvation experience. You came to Jesus Christ at some point in your life. You came to that cross and you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. And so you've had this salvation experience, this, this resurrection experience. You were dead in your sins, but now you've been made alive in Jesus Christ because somewhere along the line, you've heard a word spoken either in a church or an outreach. So you were touched by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit draws you. You surrender your life. He's pulled you out of that darkness into his life, praise God. And so maybe you felt that tugging, you've gotten saved. Maybe you came to the cross because you were at a bad point or a dark place in your life. Maybe you came to the cross, church, because someone in your life that you know, church, you saw the hand of God working in your life and you knew that if God could save them, praise God, that God is real because they needed a lot of help and a lot of hope, praise God. And so you came to the cross or maybe God reached down where you were at. Maybe you were living in your own personal hell, in your addiction, in your drug use or whatever was going on in your your life and the spirit of God touched you and drawed you and saved you praise God so one way or another praise the Lord we've had we've been touched by the Holy Spirit and we've had this salvation experience praise God this resurrection experience so every Christian should be able to identify church with the disciples on that Easter morning what they were feeling what they were going through see they were full of joy they were full of excitement, church. They were living the Easter experience, praise God, because just three days earlier, Jesus, their mentor, their friend, their teacher for some three and a half years that healed the sick, that raised the dead, that caused blinded eyes to be opened. He was tried, he was convicted, and he was crucified on a cross, and then he was put in a tomb. Talk about losing hope. They lost a lot of hope, church. <laughs> Christ was dead. But on Easter morning, praise God, death couldn't keep him, the grave couldn't hold him, and praise the Lord, he's risen and he's alive forevermore. And even the angel, Mary goes to the tomb, praise the Lord, to, to anoint the body, and the angel says, why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here anymore, he's risen, he is alive, praise God. So the disciples, 
They had something, church, to be excited about. They had something to be really excited about. And see, however you come to Christ, however you experience that, that resurrection life, church, then you know that joy and that excitement of being saved, of coming alive in Christ, praise God, that Christ saved you from your sins, uh, uh, something that you couldn't pay for. He saved you. We know that joy. We've had that experience. Uh, I remember when I first came to Christ, there was just this joy, this happiness. It felt like all the weight of the world was, li was lifted off my shoulders, praise the Lord, and I could just love anybody. The old saying goes, you can even love your mother-in-law, praise God. I had the best mother-in-law, praise the Lord. But as time goes on, church, a lot of believers find themselves in a place where their excitement for their salvation kind of wears off. Life happens. Difficulties begin to happen. Troubles and trials and sometimes even death and tragedy. And so the enemy will cause us to question our salvation experience. Was it real? Was any, did anything really happen? You know, why hasn't my life really changed? And I can't tell you, church, how many times people have come into the church and asked Jesus to come into their life, and then they go right back out those doors, and they live a defeated life. They live with no hope. They live with no joy, no purpose, no, no excitement, praise God, in their life. They're still stuck doing the same thing they used to do before they came to Christ. And just maybe, church, it's because you're living on the wrong side of the resurrection. See, because for a lot of people, when things get tough, when you begin to go through difficulties and troubles and trials, you face tragedy in your life. You face loss in your life. It's easier for you to go back to where you were, to go back to who you were, to go back to what you were doing, praise God. And this was true even for the disciples. See, because you have to realize that Easter celebration for the disciples wasn't like it is for us today, praise God. See, because we know how the story ends, but church, they didn't. See, we can see God's hand at, at work and his purpose in action because we have the word. We have the book, praise God. But they had to live it. They didn't know the outcome, what the outcome was going to be, praise the Lord. They didn't have whole families coming together and celebrating Easter. Church bells weren't ringing. Uh, Easter lilies wasn't being bought and sold. People weren't dressing up in Easter bunnies and handing out candy. There wasn't barbecues and all these celebrations going on. It was a dark time at first for the disciples. But then early Easter morning, unexpectedly, church, Jesus Christ rises from their grave and he shows up and he speaks with him. He breaks bread with him. He has a meal with him. And then all of a sudden he's gone. So now fast forward. It's been about a month or so since the disciples have seen Jesus or even talked to Jesus, talking about having your, your hopes crushed. The disciples, they see Jesus crucified. Church, they're devastated. And then their hope comes alive again on Easter morning. Jesus shows up, he talks with them, he eats a meal with them, he, he builds their faith, praise God, and all of a sudden he disappears, he's gone again, talking about a roller coaster of emotions, praise the Lord. And so now the disciples are by the Sea of Galilee, and they're back on the, uh, the other side of Easter, church. They haven't seen Jesus. They haven't talked to him since the resurrection. So just think about this for a moment. Before Easter, the disciples weren't even that good at being disciples. They weren't the best students. They rarely understood what Jesus was talking about. A lot of times Jesus talked in parables, and he would have to go and explain the parable to them, what he, uh, what he meant, praise God. Even one time, they, Jesus comes to the disciples walking on the water, and they didn't even recognize it was him. He had to tell them who they were. They thought he was a ghost. And on one occasion, they tried to cast out a demon out of a, out of a boy that this demon kept trying to throw him into the fire, and they couldn't do it, and so Jesus had to finish it up. And so the disciples, they had doubts, they had disagreements, they got angry, they got fleshly. At one time, they wanted to call down fire from heaven and burn up a bunch of people, praise the Lord. So they had emotions like us. They were real people, praise God. And so when Jesus is crucified, the disciples scattered church, and he even told them this was going to happen before it happened, and they didn't understand him, praise the Lord. And so now after the crucifixion, Jesus appears to them spend some time with them, and they're excited, they're joyful, they have all this hope, but now he's gone, he's disappeared, and there's been no more appearance of Jesus. And so the disciples are confused, church, and they've lost their hope. They're living on the other side of Easter, the other side of the empty cross, church, back on the crucifixion side, the side of loss, the side of lost hopes and feelings of defeat. A lot of times, like we we have, church, when we go through difficulties and we experience loss in our lives. See, the disciples were tempted, church, to go back to who they were, to what they were and what they were doing. They were tempted to go back to the familiar, the old way of living. And so we see here in John 21 and 3, Peter says to some of the disciples, he says, I'm going fishing. 
In other words, I'm going back to the familiar. I'm going back the way things used to be, what I used to do, praise the Lord. And those are probably four of the saddest words spoken in Scripture. I am going fishing. Because what Peter was really meaning, what he was really saying, that it's over. We had a great run, but now it's gone. And the only thing left to do is to go back to what we were doing, go back to our old lifestyles and the way we were living, praise the Lord. And so Peter probably felt, church, that things could never be like they were. And why? And it's because, church, once you meet Jesus, nothing can take his place, praise God. Nothing can satisfy. Nothing can measure up, praise the Lord. Nothing can come close to being in a relationship with Jesus Christ. See, there's a place in your heart, church, that nothing in this world can fill but Jesus Christ. And once you've been with Jesus, church, nothing can take his place, praise God. Fishing can't do it. Prosperity can't do it, church. Fame and fortune can't do it. Your spouse can't do it. Your career can't do it. Nothing can compare to being in a relationship with Jesus Christ, praise the Lord. And see, without Jesus in your life, church, nothing will ever bring true fulfillment to your life, praise God. Everything else will fall short when it comes to being in a relationship with Jesus. Because let me tell you, you were built for the spiritual. You were created to have a relationship with the Father, praise God. And there's nothing in this world that can fill that void. And man has searched the world all over with drugs, with alcohol, with relationships, with fame and fortune, trying to fill something, church, that when they were created to be filled only by Jesus Christ. You can't fill the spiritual with the physical. It takes a blood-bought, uh, God-given, Jesus-loving, born-again relationship with Jesus Christ to fill that hole in your life, and nothing in this world will fill that hole but a, a relationship with Jesus, praise God. And so Peter goes on to go fishing, and so the other disciples follow him. They go back to the familiar. They go back to what they were doing before they even met Jesus. And the Bible says they fished all night, and they caught nothing. Imagine the scene on that boat that morning, church. It wasn't one of, of uh, happiness and joy and uh, their faces. Church probably had doubt. It, was, it looked like they were probably at a, a funeral, praise the Lord. Weren't very happy at all. But maybe early in the morning, church, through the mist of the shoreline, John 22 and 5 says, a man called out from the shore, friends, do you have any fish? And this was a loaded question, church because it's Jesus calling to him. <laughs> and Jesus knew the disciples better than they knew themselves, just like Jesus knows you this morning better than you know yourself. And what Jesus was really asking him is, is your work, is your life producing any fruit? Is your work or your life giving you joy? Praise the Lord. Are you living a fulfilling life? Are you really gonna go back to the way things used to be? Praise the Lord. And if you listen this morning, maybe the Lord is speaking to you, church. Is your work, your life producing any fruit? Are you really gonna to go back to the way things were before, praise God. And see, for the disciples, the answer was no. And church, probably for many of you here this morning, the answer could be no. Because when you come alive in Christ, you can't go back to what you were. You can't go back to what you used to be, church, or, or where you used to be, because nothing will fulfill that relationship with Jesus Christ, praise God. And see, maybe before you came to the Lord, church, you were worldly. You were seeking your own, your own self-will, praise God. You were living for your own desires to do your own thing, living to please yourself. And maybe you thought that would make you happy. But then maybe one day, church, you met Jesus and he changed your life. He pulled you out of that darkness into his light, praise God. He gave you real purpose in your life. He gave you joy and freedom, praise the Lord. Maybe even in the midst of your troubles and your trials. And then maybe some of you are thinking this morning, when you got saved, that none of that never happened to you. I never felt that deliverance from the old life. And just maybe, church, because you never moved from the other side of Easter, praise the Lord. Maybe you got stuck between the crucifixion and the salvation experience, but it's the resurrection experience is where God wants you living at and wants you to experience, church, where he's at, where he's alive and well, praise God, where he has blessings and purpose for your life. See, most Christians are stuck between the two. Some Christians have had that Easter resurrection experience in their life. They've experienced the abundant life. They've experienced joy and peace. They saw strongholds fall in their lives. They experienced victory over drugs and over addictions in their life. And then there's those people, church, who's had a salvation experience, but something's happened. They've experienced hardships and difficulties and troubles in their life, maybe even loss and tragedy. And so what's happened, church, it, it's caused them to maybe doubt and to go back to where they were before they met Christ, go back to living with no sense of God's purpose or plan for their life with no hope, no fullness in their life. 
feeling powerless to do uh, what they know they should be doing, living uh, uh, lives that are just kind of like empty, church, and hopeless. And that's exactly where the disciples were on that boat, church. They were living empty and hopeless, living with no joy. They were living on the other side of Easter, church, as if there was no Jesus, praise God. And that's not where God wants you living this morning, church. <laughs> See, Jesus came back to that shoreline to tell the disciples, church, to get back on the right side of living, that right side of the resurrection, the side with purpose and the side with meaning, praise God, the side with life. And the Lord wants you to know this morning, church, if you're not, he wants you to get back on the right side of living. You might've came in here this morning living on the wrong side and the Lord wants you to get back on the right side. Church, in verse 21, and six, it says, Jesus calls to them. And he says, throw your net on the right side of the boat, praise God. And you can say that boat represents Easter. And Jesus is saying, church, you're casting your net. You're living your life on the wrong side of the boat, the side with no fulfillment, the no purpose, church, and no hope, no freedom, no deliverance, praise God. But look what happens when they listen to Jesus and they cast their net on the right side of the boat. It says they were unable to even haul in the, the catch. It was so great. It was so big. It was overflowing, church. And your lives can be overflowing this morning. See, they fished all night and they caught nothing, <laughs> nothing. But one cast in the right direction with the Lord, church, makes all the difference in the world. They went from nothing to an abundance, praise God. And I want to tell you, you might have came in here this morning with nothing, but you can leave with an abundance. You can leave with hope. You can leave with joy, unspeakable and full of glory, praise God. You may have came in less than, but you can go out more than, praise the Lord. You may be here today feeling insufficient, but in him, you are more than sufficient, praise God. What was the difference? The difference was the wrong side versus the right side. See, on the wrong side, church, there's emptiness, there's hopelessness, there's failure, there's fault, there's, there's a lack of joy, there's a lack of love, there's a lack of a, abundance because on the wrong side, there's no Jesus. But on the right side, church, there's newness, there's newness of life, there's fullness, there's freedom, there's fulfillment, there's an abundance because on the right side is where Jesus is at, the living Savior, the God of more than enough, praise God. And look, church, many Christians are going through troubles and trials today. And it feels like in their life that, that the, just the storms of life are just crashing over the, the bow of their boat, church. Just crashing over. They feel like they're sinking. Those on the wrong side of Easter are trying to weather the storms in their own strength, their own understanding, and their own knowledge, church, as if there's no Jesus. And the enemies cause them to feel like the way things are is the way things are always gonna be. But I'm here to tell you this morning, church, to get back on the right side, praise the Lord, and you'll you will live a life of an abundance, praise God. You have to realize that God is for you, praise God. Even when you don't feel him, God is for you. Even when you don't see him, God is for you. You have to realize, church, that, that God, God is not on the cross. Jesus ain't on the cross anymore, and he's not on the grave, but he's a risen savior. He's risen with all power and all authority, praise God. He said in his word, he says, I've come to give you life and life more abundantly, praise God. I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. He says, I am am the resurrection and the life, praise God. He says, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you, but I'll be with you always, even to the very end, praise God. So there is hope today for your, for your situation. There's hope for your marriage. There's hope for that loved one that's in addiction. There's hope for your family, church. Whatever you're going through today, there is hope because we don't serve a dead God. We're not living on the empty side of Easter, praise God, but we're living on the full side, the resurrection side, the side with life and authority and power, praise God. And that's where the Lord wants you living this morning, church, is on the right side because he's not dead. <laughs> he's alive and alive forevermore. And he will help you. He will lead you. He will guide you. And he'll direct you, praise God. God has a plan for your life. He has purpose for your life, praise God, this morning. So don't go back to living on the wrong side of Easter. Just because you face troubles and trials, don't, don't allow it to cause you to go back to the familiar, go back to the old way of living, the old relationships and the old friendships, church. But hold on to Jesus this morning. Get back on the right side of the boat. Praise God. The worship team wants to come on back up this morning. I told you I wouldn't hold you long. And I love what Peter did here. It says, when the nets were full and about to break, <laughs> what Peter did, church, what he saw, he looked on that shore, and when he recognized it was Jesus, church, he wasn't worried about the, the boat. <laughs> He's like, heck with the boat, heck with the fish and the nets. And all he was concerned about was getting to Jesus, praise God. And he didn't let anything stand in his way. When he, when he looked and he saw that it was Jesus, what he really saw, church, he saw his hope. 
He saw his purpose. He saw his meaning in life, praise God. And nothing on earth was going to stop him from getting to Jesus. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he grabbed his shirt, he put it on, and he jumped in the water, praise the Lord. And maybe this morning you can, uh, you can imagine Peter swimming to the shore with, with all of his might, praise God. But just maybe, church, Peter got his shirt, put it on, and he jumped on that water, and he ran all the way to the Lord, praise God, and embraced him. And, and I'm not saying he did, but just maybe, church, because earlier in Scripture, Peter again was in the boat with the disciples and Jesus comes to him and he sees Jesus and he says, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. And so Peter got out of the boat and he began to defy gravity. He began to walk on top of the water, praise the Lord. And it wasn't until he got his eyes off of Jesus and onto the storm, onto the waves, church, and the things around him that he began to sink. But just maybe here, church, he didn't have his eyes focused now on the storm. He didn't have his eyes focused on the wave. He had his eyes focused on a risen Savior, praise God. And he would, ran all the way across that water to get to Jesus, praise God. I see some of you maybe this morning, church, maybe you're going through some difficulties. You're going through some struggles in your life. You face some, some tragedies in your life and you feel like, church, you're sinking below the water. You feel like you're getting ready to drown, praise the Lord. You've got your eyes off of Jesus and you got your eyes on the storms around you, church. You're living on the wrong side of Easter. You're living on the side with no hope, no peace, no joy, no Jesus. And I've come to tell you this morning, church, to get back on the right side of Jesus, <laughs> the right side of, the, of Easter, the right side of the resurrection. Look, the Lord is standing on the shore this morning. He's calling to you to cast your net back on the right side, to get back on the right side, church, of where he's at, church. Start living your life with joy and victory and hope, praise God. Come back to Jesus. Realize that he's alive this morning, church. He has purpose and fullness for your life, praise God. <laughs> Whatever you're going through, church, don't live your life on the empty side of the cross, but come to the, to the real side, the life side, the side, church, where Jesus is alive and well, praise God. Don't go to the cold and hopeless side because Jesus is not there. He's not on the cross no more, church. Yeah, he's not in the empty tomb no more. And he's not some fat statue with a big belly in a garden waiting for you to rub it, praise God. He's the risen Savior, praise God. He's alive and well and has all power and all authority, praise God. And he's got purpose for your life. He's got direction for your life. Whatever you have need of today, church, is in Christ, praise God. <laughs> so I'm gonna have the prayer team come up this morning. And maybe that's you this morning. Maybe you say, Pastor, that's me. I've gotten my eyes off the Lord. I've gotten it focused on the storms around me. I feel like that I've been sinking, I've been drowning in the things going around me. And church, I'd say, come back to the Lord this morning. Cast your net to the right side. It doesn't matter what you're facing, what you're going through. You might even face some loss this year, went through a tragedy this year. But I wanna tell you, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. <laughs> See, death and for the Christian is just a door, church, that we step through. It has no hold on us because Jesus broke the power of death at the cross. He took the sting out of death. It's just a changing of area codes for the Christian church because he promised everlasting life. So if you're struggling this morning, church, you need prayer this morning, I invite you up to, to get prayer. We want to pray with you and then we're going to close. But live your life, church, on the right side, the right side, not on the empty side. Praise the Lord. Father, I just thank you for this simple, short message this morning. And I'd ask, Father, all those that are living, Father, Lord, with their eyes off of you, that are living with no hope, no purpose, no passion, Father, Lord, that, Lord, they would see you, Lord, and they would cast their net to the right side, that we wouldn't live on the empty side of the cross, Father, but we'd come to the side with life and purpose, I pray, Father, Lord, that you would grow this church, grow the ministry of this church, grow your people. And Father, I ask this in your precious name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. God bless you.